my pleasure now to introduce Dr. Suhad Al-Qurashi from the Urdun al Dr. Suhad is uh, American board certified in internal medicine, Jordanian board certified in rheumatology, and she is going to talk to us about rheumatoid arthritis for the non-rheumatologists. An exciting subject, actually. يعني ربنا خلق من جهة الروماتولوجيست ومن جهة أخرى non-rheumatologists كل الاختصاصات الأخرى يعني فيها أخرى. Uh, thank you for this introduction. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, our next lecture, the final one in the session, will be, ta uh, will be directed to our okay, thank you. non rheumatologist colleague. Just a quick introduction to what is rheumatoid arthritis, quick, uh, how do we treat, how do we diagnose rheumatoid arthritis, because you're going to hear a lot about rheumatoid today and tomorrow, uh, inshallah. So, uh, what is rheumatoid arthritis? Well, it is an immune-mediated inflammatory disease. What we mean by arthritis, arthritis is, is swelling of the joint. We have two terms, arthritis, arthralgia and arthritis. We're gonna talk about arthralgia is pain at the joint, arthritis is swelling of the joint. So it's an immune-mediated inflammation of the disease. Usually it is characterized by symmetrical, meaning involving both sides of the body, polyarthritis, mainly involving the small joints of the hands and the feet. But other joints can be involved uh, as well. As you can look at this, usually it involves the small joints of the hands and the feet, but it can involve the elbows, uh, the uh, shoulders, the temporomandibular joint, hip joint, knee joint. Usually it does spare the spine except for the cervical spine in advanced stages of rheumatoid arthritis. Well, rheumatoid, what causes rheumatoid? We don't know for sure, but what we know from the studies that there's some genetic backgrounds. So sometimes you can see familiar clustering of rheumatoid. You can see the, the daughter, the mom has rheumatoid, some clustering of rheumatoid. So we have some genetic background and some linkage to HLA complexity. Uh, we have some environmental triggers like smoking. Smoking is a, uh, it has been linked to rheumatoid arthritis, mainly in the process of citronization and production of anti citronide peptide antibodies, infectious agents, variable environmental agent, in the setting of auto immunity, all that together will prevent, will, will cause inflammation and the production of rheumatoid. So autoimmunity is an important part or, uh, part or it play a key role in uh, rheumatoid arthritis. When we talk about autoimmunity, we talk about autoantibodies. The famous antibody in rheumatoid is rheumatoid factor. Rheumatoid factor has been tested for years. It is not specific for rheumatoid arthritis. Its uh, specificity is around 60%. Why is it not specific? Because it is found in healthy su uh, subjects, like in 5% of healthy individuals. And the higher the age, you will have more and more prevalence of rheumatoid factor without symptoms and causing no disease, like in 10 to 20% of patients or, or people, just the normal people above the age of 65, they will test positive for rheumatoid factor. It has low sensitivity as well as low specificity. In the recent year, there has been an uh, introduction of new uh, anti uh, antibody or key player in uh, rheumatoid arthritis. The most common one is anti-citrullinated peptides antibodies, or ACPA, or we call them anti-CCP. What do we mean by citrulline? Citrulline is an uh, antibody. It's not an essential antibody that is caused by, uh, that is produced in the body after post-transitional modification of arginine by the enzyme peptidyl arginine DMA. So uh, uh, they took one of the residue of the arginine and it is uh, transformed into citrulline. These citrullinated peptides are present in various parts of the body and they have been found to be present in a uh, good amount in the inflamed synovium in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Now, anti-CCP antibody, they play a key role in rheumatoid arthritis. They have been found early in the disease course, even years and years before the manifestation of clinical symptoms start. Uh, ACPA, they are sensitive uh, they are very, they are sensitivity to rheumatoid is equivalent to, rheumato to a rheumatoid factor, like they are present in around 70 to 80 percent of patients. But the good thing about them is the specificity is high. They are 98 percent specific in patients with rheumatoid. They can be present in patients who are RF negative, 20 to 30 percent of RF negative patients. The thing about ACPA or anti CCP antibodies that they denote in erosive arthritis, they denote a more aggressive de disease and a more persistent disease, and they have treatment implications. As you know, rheumatoid, the bad thing about rheumatoid that it is an erosive disease, meaning with time you're going to have erosion and destruction of the joint, you're going to have all these deformities that we have memorized in medical school and you have loss of function. 
so that's why we try to intervene in rheumatoid as early as possible. It's not acceptable nowadays to have a patient with rheumatoid walking into a clinic with these uh, deformities. Now, uh, we have in the past uh, the, the old criteria for rheumatoid. These criteria were really, the, the, uh, the thing about the old criteria, they diagnosed rheumatoid when it is already advanced, like you're having a lot of swollen joints, erosion on x-rays. So now we have the new 2010 EULAR criteria. The aim of this criteria is trying to pick rheumatoid as early as possible so we can intervene early and uh, to prevent deformity. Now, what are the new criteria or the criteria we depend on diagnosing rheumatoid, especially in studies? Uh, well, to enter this criteria, you need to have at least one swollen joint. I mean, you cannot have only arthralgia and say the patient has rheumat definite rheumatoid. Maybe he will have pre-rheumatoid, but definite rheumatoid, you need to have at least one swollen joint not explained by any other causes. Now, the criteria is a little bit long, but the thing is that we have two main domains, four main domains. The first one is the joint distribution. Second is serology, meaning RF and anti-CCP. Symptoms duration, as well as acute phase reactant, mainly ESR and CRP. As you can see, you can just talk to the patient, examine him, then get points, sum the points all together. If you have uh, more than six points, this is a definite rheumatoid arthritis. As you can see, the more the number of flamed and swollen joints, the number of smaller joints, the higher the number of small joints, you can get higher number. The higher the titer of rheumatoid factor and CCP, you get higher uh, points, as well as the longer the duration, and the higher the ESR and the CRP, you get higher and higher points. Now, you diagnose a patient with definite rheumatoid arthritis, how do we treat rheumatoid? The aim of rheumatoid is to change the course of the disease. We treat rheumatoid, are you going to hear the term DMARDS? What is DMARDS? It's disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs. Disease modifying meaning that we're going to change the course of the disease, prevent deformity, and prevent erosions. We have, in general, two subsets of DMARDS. We have synthetic DMARDS, and uh, in the past 10, probably 18 years now, they have introduced the biological DMARDS. Synthetic DMARDS, we have the conventional synthetic DMARDS, the most important one, and our anchor treatment in patients with rheumatoid is methotrexate. Meaning, if you diagnose a patient with rheumatoid arthritis, you should start him on methotrexate plus other things if needed, unless there is contraindication for methotrexate. So the anchor drug is methotrexate, and then when if it's contraindicated, it's not working, we go to leflonamide, sulfasalazine, synthetic, targeted synthetic DMARs like tofacitinib, and biological DMARs and biosimilar. I'm not gonna talk about this because we have lots of lectures addressing bio, uh, biosimilars, uh, biologics, as well as the targeted synthetic DMARs and the guidelines for management of rheumatoid. Now, what about steroids? I mean, for internists, we see a lot of patients who goes to the internal medicine and they come back on steroids for a long time. Well, steroids in our guidelines, it's not a treatment for rheumatoid arthritis. Steroids, they are used only as short term, just when you initiate a treatment or you are gonna change your treatment plan. And they are usually given for short uh, course. We either give them either IM injection, probably single or two or three IV, injection, uh, IV injections, or just you can give a short course and taper it as quickly as possible. So steroids, they are not DMARD. They are only used for short term uh, in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, and we try to wean them as, first, as soon as possible, and uh, they are the first medication to wean in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Now, when we have a patient with rheumatoid, you're gonna hear the term poor prognostic factor. Poor prognostic factor meaning that your patient is gonna have a very long, aggressive, and erosive disease. What are the poor prognostic factor? The first one is high disease activity. When we talk about disease activity, we don't only talk about the number of swollen joints. We talk when the patients come to our clinic, we look at him. First, we look at the, how many tender joints he has, how many swollen joints he has, how does he look to himself where he's going to tell you, well, I'm feeling so bad, or he's going to probably have all swollen joints and he's feeling very well. So how does the patient look at himself? And then when we do the serological marker ESR and CRP, we sum all these together, and when we get uh, a score, we have multiple scores. The most famous one we have going to hear is DAS-20. Which counts 28 joints, and the higher the activity, the higher the number of the score means you are having a, an active disease. So the higher the, sco the activity score, the higher the acute phase reacting ESR and CRP, the higher the swollen joint count, so presence of rheumatoid body. factor and APA, especially at high titer, presence of early erosions, and if you try DMARD like methotrexate and other and other medication, they failed. All that denotes you're going to have an aggressive disease, and you have to be aggressive in treating these patients. 
So that's how do we treat established rheumatoid. Now, we know in rheumatoid that early treatment is the better outcomes. We can have erosions as soon as a few months after diagnosing rheumatoid arthritis, probably six, seven, eight months. If you don't treat, you're going to stop at erosion, and you're going to lose your chance uh, of, of uh, fixing the joint as soon as possible, and you're going to have some functional uh, impairment. So we know that rheumatoid goes through stages of uh, genetic and environmental stages, which we call pre-rheumatoid. There is a stage of autoimmunity, and there is a stage where the patients are out having some arthralgia, and maybe some undifferentiated arthritis, they, they go into full-blown rheumatoid arthritis. So trying to address this, the ULAR has defined uh, what we call the clinical significant arthralgia, meaning if a patient goes to your clinic, especially primary care or internal medicine, complaining of arthralgia, these are the things that you should bear in your mind that early, uh, early referral to a rheumatologist is important to pick up uh, early uh, patients with rheumatoid. These are, they depend on history and physical examination. In history, you look at the patient to see how long the duration of the symptoms, if they are short duration, if the symptoms are mainly in the metacarpophalangeal joint, if, the, if he has morning stiffness more than 60 minutes, severe symptoms in the morning, and if, especially if he has a first degree relatives with, with rheumatoid arthritis, these things will, even if the patient is having aches and pains and arthralgia, will point maybe this patient will progress into rheumatoid arthritis. And when you do the physical examination, look at the patient, if he's ha is having difficulty in making a fist, or if you, when you squeeze his metacarpophalangeal joint, he's having pain, well, probably this patient is at risk for rheumatoid arthritis, so refer him to a rheumatologist. Here, when we come, patient comes to us, we examine him, sometimes we throw some tests like rheumatoid factor, and aqua, anti-carbamylated peptides, serological markers, and sometimes we use ultrasound and MRI or other imaging modalities to look for subclinical synovitis that we are not seeing by our clinical eye. So that's about clinical significant arthralgia. What if a patient comes with arthritis, probably one or two joints, single joint, but he does not fulfill the criteria for rheumatoid arthritis that we talked about? These are the patients we call undifferentiated arthritis. They don't fulfill the criteria for rheumatoid, and they don't fulfill any criteria for any rheumatological disease. So what to do in these patients? Well, these patients, studies had that show that 40 to 50% of these patients will have spontaneous remission, so that's good. But 30% of these patients will progress into rheumatoid, and the rest of the patients will, with time, evolve into other connective tissue diseases or other diseases like psoriatic arthritis, and closing whatever. So which patients uh, to pick as uh, undifferentiated arthritis that they may progress to rheumatoid. Also, the ULAR has uh, put some suggestions that in this patient do a full history and physical examination. Do basic workup, CBC, liver enzymes, urine analysis, and ANA. And according to the setting or where do you live or where do you practice, practice you can do Lyme disease, parvovirus, urethra or cervical swab, uh, antibacterial serology. Like in our country, we do a lot of brucella because we see a lot of brucella arthritis, hip, BC, or chest x-ray. And then then you refer him to a rheumatologist who will do these, uh, uh, these tests like rheumatoid factor, anti-CCP, ESR, CRP to see which patients will, will progress to rheumatoid arthritis. So patient with undifferentiated arthritis, 30% will progress to rheumatoid. Hello, which patients are at risk of progressing to rheumatoid? These are the patients who they have these risk factors, which are erosions on x-ray, positive anti-CCP antibodies, rheumatoid factor, and high disease activity, meaning they have multiple swollen joints. So patients with undifferentiated arthritis with these risk factors, they have the chance of developing rheumatoid. And if you're gonna wait to fulfill the criteria, you're gonna lose your window of opportunity. So we try to refer them as early as possible. And actually in these patients with undifferentiated arthritis, oh, sorry. Uh, in undifferentiated arthritis, the ULI guideline is to start them on DMARDs, mainly methotrexate, just the way that we treat definite rheumatoid arthritis. The last thing, the last two minutes I'm going to talk about is extra-articular features because in your internal medicine clinic or primary care clinic, you're going to have patients with rheumatoid not only with arthritis but with extra-articular manifestations. Now, extra-articular manifestations, they are present in around 40% of these patients. They are more in male and smokers, especially the lung disease. The more the severe, the, the more severe arthritis they have, the more longer duration of the disease, the chances of extra-articular manifestation is higher. There is a correlation of extra-articular manifestation with 
positive rheumatoid factor. Uh, Anti-CCP, I did not really, I looked through the studies, I did not find a convincing evidence of correlation of anti-CCP with higher chance of extra-articular manifestation except of rheumatoid nodules. The longer duration of the disease, if you have a longer duration of the disease, the chances of uh, extra-articular manifestation are higher, and they are associated actually with increased mortality in these patients uh, with rheumatoid arthritis. What extra-articular manifestations we see, the most common is rheumatoid nodule, which is very common, uh, it's around 30% of patients with rheumatoid, especially who are rheumatoid factor positive and even anti-CCB positive. The other thing is that skin lesions like pyoderma gangrenosum, we are seeing actually, we see lots of patients with pyoderma gangrenosum, especially in these patients with long-standing rheumatoid who, uh, I have few patients who stopped by their own uh, DMI, their own medication by themselves, and they came to the clinic having uh, uh, pyoderma gangrenosum or patients with very active disease. Vasculitis, either cutaneous or digital vasculitis, as Dr. Nader said, this can be very bad, and this is very critical. You can uh, lose a limb in these patients, so you be very aggressive in the management of these patients. And uh, eye complications, scleritis, episcleritis, and we saw actually patients like these who stop their medication, very active disease, and they comes with active scleritis and pending eye perforation. You have to be very aggressive in the management of these patients. Uh, interstitial lung disease, more common in smoker. In males, we have variable type, non-specific non interstitial pneumonia, UIP, the management is different. But keep in mind, patient with rheumatoid, complaining of chest, uh, of uh, shortness of breath, cough, they can have interstitial lung disease. Pleural effusion, uh, usually it's, it's present in patients with rheumatoid. Uh, we just, our residents in Islamic hospital yesterday just presented a case with a, a rheumatoid arthritis who came with right sided pleural effusion and it turned out to be malignant actually. So not every pleural effusion in a patient with rheumatoid is, uh, is uh, extra articular manifestation. I'm nearly done. Uh, so uh, usually the, the fluid is exudate and low sugar, but keep in mind that this is one of the extra articular manifestations of rheumatoid. This is a patient with neutropenia, big skin, filthy syndrome. This is, uh, when you do, look at filthy syndrome, uh, look at the blood film, you may, may, patient may be harboring large granular cell leukemia. Uh, one of the, also the commonest manifestation of extra articular manifestation of rheumatoid is chronic anemia. And uh, by this I conclude, I hope I summarize the topic of uh, rheumatoid arthritis uh, for you, especially our uh, non-rheumatologist colleagues, since uh, Doctora, she talked about floods in Kuwait, and we're going into winter. This is a, a, a picture from the spring uh, time in Ajlon, one of the most cities, uh, nicest cities of uh, Jordan. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you, doctor. Uh, thank you. While this concludes our session, thank you very much. And there is a forthcoming symposium, I think.